Hey there. So it's been a while since I put out some videos, but you know, I'm writing another certification exam, so probably time to put out some more videos. And uh, this time around, I have a topic that I think you'll find interesting. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about passwords and password strengthening or key stretching or key strengthening techniques. Um, this is an inter interesting topic if you haven't really delved into it too much. And, uh, you know, as I've gone through things and learned things, I'm, I'm not going to share them with you. So I think this will be a, a cool video. So let's set things up. Um, think about a website that stores your username and password for, for something that you're using. How does the website save your password exactly, right? Um, well, hopefully they're not just taking your username, your email address perhaps, and your password just as is and saving it. Although lots of sites do that, uh, they that's not secure, right? That's not a secure way to uh, store your password. So what they're really most likely doing is they're taking your password and they're hashing it in some way and then saving the value of the hash. All right. So take an example. If uh, you and I have an account on the same website and say by chance we pick the same password. My password is password123 and your password is password123. Well, if we just run that through a hashing algorithm, we're going to get the same output. And that means the hashing output for my password is going to be the same as the hashing output for your password. That means a bad guy too, if they've taken that password and pre-computed a hash value for it, now they also know, you know what the password is because they can match their hash to what our hashes are. So, you know, websites, this is a problem. They got to figure out a way around it. And there's a bunch of things that they can do uh, about that. There's a, of course, there's salting and peppering and hashing and key derivation functions and, and things like that that they can do. And that's kind of what we're going to get into and talk about in the rest of this video. So, so first of all, let's, uh, let's talk about salt. What is salt? Well, a salt is just a random value basically that gets attached somehow into your password. Maybe it's added to the front or at the end or, or something is done, who knows what, but it's a random value that that's used as part of, you know, creating that hash value for your password. So in the example I just used, if my password is password123 plus some hash value, uh, sorry, some salt value, I'm going to get a hash, you know, that's the result of those together. Your password, password123, and whatever salt was assigned for you, because it's random, you're going to get a different hash value, right? And that means just by looking at the list of hash values, we won't know if the passwords are the same. Same with the bad guy, right? They have to now pre-compute if they're going to be able to do that. Uh, they got to pre-compute, you know, all these passwords with potentially a whole bunch of different salts and that becomes difficult, right? So it's so one thing that uh, an organization can do. And just while we're talking about adding things to, to keys, um, there's another concept called pepper. I'll put these together, salt and pepper, because salt and pepper goes together. Uh, pepper is the concept of a static site-wide or application-wide secret that goes into the uh, hashing function. So just as an example, maybe, maybe a website uh, takes my password and at the front, they add some random salt and at the back end, they use this static pepper value and then they hash that together and that's how they get the result. Um, obviously pepper being static and site wide could become known, but you know, it's another layer that can be added to help impede the bad guys and slow things down and make uh, rainbow tables, these pre-computed hash values less valuable. So we've talked about things that they can add. But what about that hashing value itself? Now, I did a video a while back about hashing. Um, and just to kind of reiterate a little bit, uh, a hash is a one-way function where you take some kind of data, you run it through the hashing algorithm, and you get an output. And as long as you always have the exact same input, you'll always get the, the fixed value output of whatever that data is. Um, now, cryptographic hashes are meant to be computed very quickly right? Because hashes have lots of different uses and, and they're meant to be done quickly. But when we're talking about passwords, you know, we don't things, we don't want things to be too quick because remember, we're trying to impede bad guys. So rather than just a straight up crypt cryptographic hash, what we can do is use a key derivation function. And a key derivation function is just something that derives secrets from the key. And in a password uh, based key derivation function, 
it's that password that it uses to drive the key information and the secrets from. And a, a key derivation function has the concept of salt, but also has the concept of work factor or iterations, right? So it might, it might do a thousand iterations of something. So you take your password and you run it through this uh, key derivation function, and it might do something a thousand times to that, to that password before it gets your hashed output. And again, something makes it a lot more difficult for a bad guy if they're trying to figure out what passwords are, how to, you know, get into your account makes it a lot more difficult if they happen to be able to dump the data, the password database for some reason. Um, so yeah, key derivation functions, those are actually pretty interesting all by themselves. Um, there's basically four that I am I have a little bit of information about. Um, the Probably the most popular one that's always talked about is PBKDF2. Um, it's an old um, key derivation function. It hasn't aged very well, but it's very popular. Uh, it gets used a lot. That's probably the, the, mm, the most common example uh, you'll hear of when we're talking about key stretching algorithms. Another one is uh, Scrypt. And Scrypt is basically an improvement on PBKDF2. It um, has a memory hard function that makes it a little bit better. The most recent, most modern uh, uh, key derivation function that I know of is called Argon2. And I think it's the better one of of all of them right now. Um, and it was the winner of some cryptographic contest uh, a number of years ago. Uh, seems to be uh, a better uh, key derivation function because it's resistant to, you know, multi-core computer GPU processing type cracking. It's, uh, it's newer and better. I guess that's <laughs> the way to put it. And the fourth one that I know about is called uh, Bcrypt. And bcrypt is not actually a key derivation function. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a function that's used in Unix and Linux to, uh, to protect the, uh, the password shadow file, I think. And it's based on uh, blowfish encryption. So it, it's technically not a KDF, but, but is used for this sort of key structuring function. So, so yeah, so interesting topic. Um, um, if you want to dive into any of these and learn more, there's lots of documentation on them, especially for uh, Argon2. Because Argon2 is released under Creative Commons, you can actually go to the Git site and take a look at, at how it works. And it's very interesting to, to look at. So if you're, that's something that you're interested in, you can always go ahead and do that. So there you go. We've, we've talked about how, how your passwords can be protected with key stretching or key strengthening. I hope that was entertaining to you. If you have any comments or if I misspoke somewhere or I said something wrong, by all means, please uh, make a comment below. Let me know. Um, I'm usually pretty responsive to questions or if there's uh, anything like that that you need to, to ask me. Alrighty, have a great day.